going against the person who you love. I will never believe that a messenger of God can lie. That means he was dead or alive. It says Jonah was three days in the belly of the fish. Three days told. and three nights. Don't cut. Okay, three days and, and three nights yes, in the belly quote, of the fish. Yes. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Yes, so in when the Jonah, heart of the earth. So when Jonah was alive, what was Jesus Christ peace be upon him? So, but the main purpose is he being in the heart of the earth, which is fulfilled. The prophecy says, as Jonah was, how was Jonah dead or alive? He was alive, as you told. So Jesus Christ also has to be alive. Plain, simple reading. Why are you following the devil's footstep? Simple, if Jonah was alive, Jesus Christ has to be alive, peace be upon him. If you say he was dead, that means you are saying Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, lied. That means he is not a man of God. So the prophecy says that so as Jonah, he shall be three days in the belly of the earth. Three days and three nights. Why are you cutting, brother? Okay. You don't know English? Okay, I am not cutting. Let it take it as three days and three nights. Yes, very good. But uh, Dr. Zakin, I... Okay, okay wait, wait. Do you know the Bible? When was Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, put on the cross? Which day was it? It was on Friday. Friday when? When was he taken down? At night. At night. Friday night, correct? So he was put in the sepulcher when? Maybe at night. Friday night, correct. Mm -hmm. When was the tomb empty? When did Mary Magdalene found the tomb empty? Sunday. What time? Morning, afternoon, evening? Well, at night, I guess. Morning. Sunday morning? Yes. Okay. So if you count, Friday night, he was in the tomb. One night. Saturday morning, full day he was in the tomb. One night, one day. Saturday night, he was there. Two nights and one day. Does two nights and one day equal to three days and three nights? Technically, no, sir. So technically, why are you telling Jesus Christ is a liar? Peace be upon him. Now, Billah. So technically, you are calling Jesus Christ a liar. No, sir, but I... No, sir, no, sir, no, sir, 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 here. Why are you accusing my beloved prophet Jesus Christ? Peace be upon him. I wouldn't like anyone accusing my prophet to be a liar. Once, twice. Why? Because I don't see a valid reason why they have to make it false of Jesus' crucifixion. You are making false, things. not I. Quran is very clear, he was not crucified, neither was he killed. Even in the Bible, he was put on the cross, but he did not die on the cross. Crucifixion means the person should die on the cross. C-R-U-C-I-F-I-X-I-O-N. But a new word has to be coined. He was put on the cross, but did not die. It's called as crucifixion. C-R-U-C-I. F-I-C-T-I-O-N. It's the fiction. So if he dies, it's called as crucifixion. If he does not die, it's a fiction. It's a story. So if you read the Bible, in the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not die on the cross. If he dies, that means he's lying. So if you say he died, that means he's a liar. I would prefer calling my prophet as a truthful person rather than a liar. So what you're talking is the teachings of the church, of your priest. You are more bothered about following your priest than following the messenger of Allah. For you, the teaching of the church is more important than the teachings of the Bible. So to fulfill the teachings of your church, you are calling Prophet Jesus a liar. I would not like to call my prophet a liar, brother. Do you understand English? Yes, so do I. So you have to agree that Jesus was alive. And Jesus wasn't crucified, everything is matching. What you are talking is the teaching of the church, not the Bible. So, but as sir, you but think for a redemption of sin, why would one want to lie about the crucifixion of Jesus? But where did Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, say that he will redeem people's sin? Quote me any one verse in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that he is God or worship me. Nowhere does it say. In fact, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, 
in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 7 to 20, that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the skies and the Pharisees, you shall never enter the kingdom of heaven. So if you want to go to heaven, you have to follow all the rules and laws and commandments of the Old Testament. Yes. So Old Testament says God is one. It doesn't say three in one. It says God has got no image. God has got no idol. Yet, many of the Catholics, they do idol worship. They make an image of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. It clearly says that when a person came to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 19, verse number 16, 17, that a man approached Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, asked him, that good master, what good things should I do so that I enter eternal life? So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, replies, why thou callest me good? There's only one good, and that is Almighty God. If you want to enter eternal life, you keep the commandments. He never said you believe that I'm God. He never said you believe that I died on the cross for your sins. That is the teaching of Paul, not of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Paul says in Corinthians and all that believe in Jesus. Where did Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, say? He said that if you want to go to heaven, you keep the commandments. So are you going to follow Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, or somebody else? Jesus Christ. And so where Christ. did Jesus say that you have to believe that I died for your sin? Show me one quotation where he himself said it. So in Matthew, I'm not sure with the verses, but he says about the loss, he has come to fulfill the loss. If someone comes to fulfill the loss, does it mean that he died for his sins? If I have come to fulfill your loss, if you don't understand, I'm trying to fulfill your loss, that doesn't mean I become God. That doesn't mean that I've come to die for your sin. Yes, he came to guide the people. And even I believe in that. Where does it say that he died for your sins? So, like John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world, he gave him one and only son, Lord Jesus. What you're quoting is Gospel of John chapter 3 verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Do you know this word begotten yes, is a sir. depolition? It's a fabrication. It's a concoction according to the Revised Standard Edition of the Bible. The Revised Standard Version of the Bible, revised by Thaidu Christian scholars of the highest eminence. It says this word begotten is a depolition. It's a fabrication. It's a concoction. And they're thrown out of the Bible. So this word begotten is a fabrication and again for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son whosoever believeth in him shall have ever life. you have to believe in him not believing Paul so where is the problem where am I saying don't believe in him even I believe in him I follow him Jesus Christ peace be upon him was circumcised brother are you circumcised no yeah. I'm circumcised who's following Jesus you or me Who's following Jesus? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said we have to follow the Old Testament. It's mentioned in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse number 18, don't have alcohol. It's mentioned in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1, don't be drunk with alcohol. Brother, do you have alcohol? No, sir. You have alcohol? No. Mashallah, this part you're following. Brother, do you have pork? Yes, I do. It's mentioned in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8, not to have pork. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8, not to have pork. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5, don't have pork. You have pork, I don't have pork. Who's following Jesus more, you or me? So, but in New Testament... But I'm asking the question, you are following Jesus more or me? So, you forgot to quote another verse in New Testament. I'm not sure with the verse numbers. But it says, what you have with your mouth doesn't defile your body. And it was from Jesus. But where does it say that you should have pork? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 7 to 20. It says, if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, you have to follow all the laws and commandments of the Old Testament. Same thing. What you have doesn't defile, that does not overrule. That you should not follow the laws and commandments of the Old Testament. Where does it say? Jesus Christ, peace be upon cannot contradict. If you break one jot or tittle, Gospel of... Matthew chapter 5, verse number 7 to 20. I've come not to destroy. I've come not to destroy, but to fulfill. 
Anyone who breaks one of the least commandments, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever shall keep the commandments and teach men to do so will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. So here Jesus is telling, even if you break one jot or tittle from the Old Testament, you shall not enter Jannah. You shall not enter paradise. So where did Jesus Christ say that you have to have pork? Well, sir, as I told you, he again mentions that it doesn't defile your body what goes Does it talk mouth. about pork? No, sir. But it's clearly mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse number 7 to 20. If you don't understand English, it's whose problem? Your problem or my problem? In the Bible, book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 7 to 8. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse number 8. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse number 2 to 5, says you should not have pork. So if I don't have pork, am I following Jesus can better than you or not? Sir, I also follow New Testament. Even I follow New Testament. Nowhere does the New Testament say, nowhere does Jesus Christ, peace be upon, say in the New Testament to have pork. Where does it say? Give me the reference. He, in specific, doesn't tell to have pork. I want to follow specific. When specific Old Testament says you should not have, never will Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, contradict anything from the Old Testament. If he contradicts, that means he's lying in Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse number 17. Because he says, I've come not to destroy the law of the prophets. I've come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Fulfill means follow everything of the Old Testament. So why do you want to make Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, a liar? No, sir. I definitely not tell he's so a So please, liar. go back home. Read. Stop having pork. Stop having alcohol. Believe in one God. Don't do idol worship. Believe he's the messenger of God and not God. And that will take the devil out of you, inshallah. Hope that answers the question. God bless you, sir, everyone. He was such a sus such a peaceful person i mean he was so calm in in the way he was talking and conducting himself i wish dr zaki naik was at least gentle with him um other than that i mean a good conversation came out of this one question that was asked by this guy yes uh they're talking about where does jesus talk about being God, they're talking about uh, how Jesus preached the said, follow the Old Testament and other stuff in there. I always ask this question why is it that the church feels like they can interpret the Bible according to how they want without actually thinking about it? How are you going to? Because then people believe in certain different things. Like he mentioned the Catholic make these idols. Other churches don't do that. Um, other Christians say Jesus didn't say he was God. Other Christians are going to say yes he is God. Because it says somewhere that him and the Father are one. So there's all those things. It's like each church their own interpretation. And then how... And then when you come together as Christians, what happens? You clash. You clash. That's why even when you go to such events, what you believe in is put down because all of you are believing in different things, are using different Bibles. You've just got your own way of um, explaining things and seeing things. Uh, it was a fruitful conversation. I'd love to believe. And I hope the guy that asked the question uh, got something out of this. Otherwise, I know a lot of us do believe that Jesus was in God and we also do believe that uh, if it's Islam, if it's Christianity, uh, Buddhism, whatever it is that you follow, you feel like uh, that's the right path and that's the holy path, do you understand? But when we talk about um, being tempted by maybe Satan or something like being influenced, uh, I don't know, there's different factors you can look at. If a religion is doing good to me, I feel like 
it's right but then if it sees no wrong in harming someone or doing something bad to someone then there's uh, a lot of things wrong with that otherwise just don't follow anything be sure of what you want go out there do your research figure out what you want to figure out and find the right path in life just don't just don't easily be influenced by anyone because not everyone wants the best for you i hope that makes sense otherwise let me know what you guys think about this video your thoughts and everything are all welcome if there's anything you want me to react to drop the link down below and i'll be more than glad to react to it make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video